I started my new job at Will Rogers Airport. I say new job, but I was really just moved to a different airline and working on the same ramp agent position. Now I have to tell you that I have a crippling fear of heights. And my least favorite part of being a ramp agent is when I have to climb in a cargo bin or rear loading plane because it's about 20 feet above the ground. The first thing is it was raining. Not just light raining, but pouring rain with a few scattered lightning flashes and random power surges. Every now and then, we have dead bodies transported in the cargo bins. This was one of those occasions, and tonight was my lucky night apparently because my manager told me I was throwing this plane. Throwing me, I was pulling the cargo out of the bin. It was the last plane for the night, and wasn't very much cargo besides the body. My coworker John pulled the ramp loader to the plane and raised it up so I can walk up to the conveyor belt to enter the bin. About four other co-workers come over with a baggage tug for the cargo. I say to everyone in a louder than normal tone because the rain was loudly smacking the metal shell of the airplane. I hope y'all are ready. I'm not trying to be out here all night. John laughed and said, don't worry about it. Maybe you can find a new friend in there, in reference to the bodies. I didn't think it was funny, but I chuckled and told him to shut up and let's get going. I climbed into the small and cramped space and sat in the bin as far from the human-sized white cardboard box as I could and pulled my phone out of my pocket to select a playlist to listen to while I throw the bin. I find a good one and I start working. The conveyor belt moves at a snail's pace and you have to wait until they scan each individual package so I can't just throw them as fast as I want to to get out of there. About 10 minutes into it, I'm getting closer and closer to this box and my music stops playing. I've had earbuds that short out when they get wet. So in the front of my mind, I automatically assumed that the rain somehow got on it and I just needed to shake the little water out of them. But they were bone dry. I checked Spotify to see if it was a glitch or a problem with the app. And I see I have an unread text. Did I get a notification and forget in the midst of my rap fuel baggage handling? The way my phone is set up when I get a message, it will tell you who it is from, but it won't display the message. You have to access them and read it. The message was from an unknown number, which was odd because very few people have my number. I clicked the notification and I read the message and all it said was hi. I sent a text back and I said, uh, who is this? My phone displayed that whoever sent the message saw mine immediately after it sent. I waited and no response. I started my playlist back up and got back to my job. Shortly after, a crash of thunder that was so loud the plane shook made me jump at first, but I quickly rationalized it and returned to work. I noticed the conveyor belt was no longer moving. I yelled to John, what the hell is going on up there? Why did it stop? He told me to sit tight, they're gonna drop off this load. I think to myself, where else am I gonna go? About one minute later, it got cold like I could see my breath cold. I wrote it off as just a cold front, and I reach over for some stranger's luggage to lean on while I wait. As I look over for a bag to grab, lightning went across the sky and I saw a quick flash of a little boy, 11, maybe 12 years old, sitting on a white box, staring at me with this eerily happy smile, and his head turned slightly to the side. My heart sunk and I froze never taking my eyes off that box for what felt like hours. I was startled by the replacement conveyor belt starting up right next to the plane. I darted to the moving conveyor, crawling as fast as I could, trying to keep my balance and panic at the same time. I hit the ground and looked at John and said, nope, I'm done. You're gonna have to go in there. I didn't want to explain exactly what I saw, but John knew something scared me. So he asked me what was wrong and who was it. I stuttered a little bit, and I walked away before I could say anything. Then I got a new text message notification that I heard loud and clear this time. It responds from an unknown sender saying, It's your new friend. 